the mo migrating motor complex. I'll show you a picture of that. And that leads, we think, to bacterial overgrowth. So here's what we're going to talk about next. Now, if, if you're living in 2019 and you don't think food poisoning causes IBS, you need to replay this video or uh, at some point in the future uh, or replay uh, a podcast of me talking in the last two years because food poisoning causes IBS. This is a 45 study meta-analysis by the Mayo Clinic published in 2017. Food poisoning leads to IBS. 11% of people exposed develop IBS, one in nine. So now people come into the office and they say, look, I've had IBS for 10 years, I'm having diarrhea. I don't remember food poisoning. Well, they're having diarrhea today. They don't remember day one of diarrhea. So it's just, it's just, it's too far in the past. So not everybody remembers, like some people do. They were on a vacation, the vacation was ruined, they had blood on their stool, they had to get admitted to hospital, they needed fluids or whatever. All of that is, uh, is, uh, is memorable, but you may not remember just one day of diarrhea, maybe it was you ate at a restaurant that you, you didn't usually eat at, and so it was 10 years ago and you don't remember. But these are prospective studies here. This is not a memory, these are memory studies. These are outbreaks of gastroenteritis that were followed. So what's interesting is focus on the top five, but the top five are, it's all about how sick you were. Severity, severity, severity. And severity can be, you needed antibiotics, you were sick more than seven days, you had blood in the stool, you lost weight. All of those things would predict the development of IBS women are more likely to develop IBS, so almost by two to one ratio. So something is happening that, that puts women at risk, but I'll tell you what it might be later. And, and yeah, I think you'll be interested in this. This is a really interesting study because we really can't know how much of IBS is food poisoning because you've had it for 10 years and you can't study the whole population in a real time. But we modeled this, so this was a model. We pretended that 300 million people showed up in the United States in exactly the demographics as currently it, it is, and looked at the development of IBS based on Center for Disease Control data on food poisoning. And using that, you reach steady state at nine, uh, at, sorry, at 9.1%. So in other words, 9.1% of those 300 million people, based on what we know today, how much food poisoning occurs in the US, could get IBS. Well, 12 to 15% of the US population has IBS. So nine out of 12 or 15 is two thirds of IBS. So this study sort of suggests maybe most of IBS is food poisoning and it could easily be explained by what we already know today.